Folks of the weather, welcome to this episode of State of the Weather Address. This is the thing we want to keep our eye on between the 12th and 15th of November. A powerful storm system is being picked up by the models. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about the potential storm tracks across the central, southern, and eastern United States. I'm also going to talk about how much snow we could be getting. And I'm going to be unveiling a technique called the Two Days Trend Stacker Method. And we're going to look at where the models are trending. And so you want to stick around with that. And we got a special announcement as well in this episode. So let's crack right into it. Comment below. Do you like winter storms or severe storms better? I'm kind of curious to see what our community is, uh, you know, likes. I think it's a lot of winter storms, but I think there's a lot of severe storm lovers as well. So comment that below. And we're going to get right into the analysis here. Let's look at those teleconnections. Well, we got some warming off the Gulf of Alaska. They call it the warm blob. And this is causing ridging out west and troughing in the east. We have some major Arctic outbreaks uh, happening now in the eastern United States, central United States. We got another cold shot coming down, and that's going to set the stage for a potential powerful storm system um, and uh, a lot of rain and potentially some snow. So we've got an El Nino, you know, continuing to develop a little bit of a Modokai signal here with that cooling off the east uh, or western uh, coast of uh, South America. So this is setting the stage for uh, something special this winter uh, for the east half of the United States. Now, before we get into my forecast and what the models are showing, we've got a special announcement here on the channel here, introducing the warrior line. And with this warrior line, we're going to have a lot of different surprises released um, over the next uh, several months and beyond. The first surprise here is a uh, Facebook group. It's called Weather Warriors. Now, this has been around for a couple of years. I actually created this in 2015, and we ran a lot of uh, tests over the past couple of years. But I recently revamped it, and it's inside we are having uh, weather photo contests, weather uh, prediction contests, uh, storm discussion threads, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so Open up your Facebook app or get on Facebook and join this group. And we actually have a contest ongoing right now for this storm system. So this is our weekly warrior contest. Predict how much snow Buffalo, New York will see on the 13th, okay? Put your comment on this thread. You'll find it on the Facebook group page. And enter by the 11th. And so I'm going to pick one winner, whoever's the closest. I'm going to pick one winner. They'll receive an 11 by 14 inch signed matted print of uh, this photo right here, okay? So this is a photo I took a couple of years ago out in uh, near Pender, Nebraska, okay, storm chasing. I've been doing that for, you know, the past, a little over a decade or so. So comment that below and uh, join the group and uh, we'll get the party started. So let's look at that medium range forecast. Uh, I'm gonna look over my forecast first and then I'll show you what the models show. This is the snowstorm threat and it's gonna run from the 12th through the 15th. I would, you know, 14th, maybe even the 15th. And this is, uh, the purple area is going to be kind of a moderate to, uh, yeah, I'd say a moderate threat right now for uh, some snow, uh, at least a couple of inches in that area, probably more in some areas. And then the greatest threat is going to lie here in uh, the te Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma Panhandle, potentially southern Oklahoma, and then also way inland in Maine and New York and potentially Ohio. So I think there's a high threat for some snow, at least, you know, at least an inch or two, and some areas receiving several inches in that area. So that's our general look for this uh, system. Now, let's get a little bit deeper here. Let's look at what the weather, weather models are saying. So this is pivotalweather.com. This is right now. We're going to go uh, fast forward here on the 12th. Now, you want to keep an eye on this. These are cold shots of air, okay? This is height anomalies. You got some ridging out here. This ridging is shunting down tons, buckets of cold air, okay? And that's what's really driving this cold air. Now, with really powerful storm systems, um, for like blizzards, when you get that comma head shape look with a powerful, you know, pressure gradients, this isn't the best look in the world, but this will uh, contribute to a really widespread area and lots of precips. So still a very powerful storm system. But we've got a, a little mini trough or a little sh a wave, a short wave out here, and then one out here. Now, what we you'd like to see is you'd like to see these merge together, kind of like this thing is, but, you know, not exactly that. But, you know, you want to see one blob, not two of these. 
Because when you get two of these, you get this kind of, you get like a low down here and a low down here, and it's just kind of a big long front, okay, long barrel clinic zone. And it just kind of has this flat look to the storm system. So that's the concern with the storm system. But as we get to the 13th and the 14th, that northern stream branch begins to kind of pick this one up, okay? It's still not perfect. You'd like it to be kind of tilted, you know, like that and more together. Um but nonetheless, it's starting to merge together. And so I think this thing will really start to strengthen as it heads east towards the east coast. And it might be a little bit late when it turns into a nice big, big old snowstorm blizzard type of thing. It might already be up in Canada by the time that happens, as you'll see here as we get towards the 15th. See it? Boom. There it goes. It's really powerful now. It's one big old uh, wave. And I think that's what's going to happen. So folks in Eastern Canada might be in for a treat around the 15th. Um, a big, powerful storm system. So, yeah, this pattern kind of, you know, maybe it even starts to change as we get towards late month. So people in the West, you see all those little uh, cold anomalies? That's going to be something to watch. I'll be making some videos on that for the people on the West Coast in the future. So we'll look at the vorticity here real fast. This is the 13th, and you can see what I'm talking about. This is the energy and the spin, the atmosphere. This contributes to uh, low pressure systems, storm systems. And you can see that piece of energy up there, and then one down here. They're kind of split apart. You'd like to see them merge together. But as we get towards the 14th, the 15th, you can see these things merge together. And then eventually, on the 15th, it really starts to get going in Canada. All right, so look at the storm system and the precip. And uh, we'll uh, fast forward this. And this is going to be the tw uh, the 11th right here. This is the 540 line. This is going to be your average temperature of 32 degrees in the atmosphere. Typically, north of that, you're going to get snow. And south of that, you're going to get rain. Um, sometimes near and along it, you'll get kind of mixed precipitation. So you can see, look, and you got a high pressure system here. This is going to drive that cold air down south. Okay. And uh, that ridging is happening out here. It's shunting that cold air. So you're getting a lot of cold air that spills south. And that's going to set the stage here. And now you got uh, some warm air. Um, yeah, you got a little bit of warm air advection down here too. And uh, that's going to really aid you know, out of the Gulf of Mexico. And it's going to slam into that cold air up here, that high pressure system. And you're going to get some a little line of uh, snow here. And there's gonna, it's probably gonna be kind of a 50-50 thing where you get, you know, rain south of it, south of it, and then uh, rain or uh, snow north of it, and it's gonna have a flat appearance uh, because of how the height anomalies are set up, or the heights are set up here, and so you get snow all the way down into Texas potentially. I'm not 100% sure that it'll go that far south, but I looked at the European computer model, which you're, you know, they keep that thing in like, you know, freaking. I don't know. They, they, you know, you have to pay for that, and uh, but I, you know, I'm paying for it, and uh, you can't technically show that unless uh, I think you pay the European office. But anyway, nonetheless, the Europeans showing that thing too, all the way into Texas, and uh, this will track north. This is uh, the 12th, and we'll track into the 13th. Right now, this is the 13th. It tracks into the northeastern United States. Whoops, go back a few, right there on the 13th towards. The afternoon. Here's your low pressure system. And you can see that flat appearance I'm talking about where you got a warm front out here and then your cold front's just kind of dangling out here, but it's kind of flat looking. Okay, so you don't have that comma head appearance. It's just kind of rain and then north of that rain is, is snow, just a line of snow. And typically with these type of storms, they're not as uh, windy and you don't get as much snow. But nonetheless, Lots of moisture to work with, powerful cold air coming down. This storm system is going to be widespread. It's going to be powerful nonetheless. Okay, so we'll fast forward this into the 14th. And you can see the 14th that really starts to get going up in Canada. Here's your low pressure system. Um, near blizzard conditions out there by the looks of those isobars. When you get these isobars packed tightly together, that means there's a strong pressure gradient. When there's a strong pressure gradient, there's a lot of wind, okay? There's a lot of wind and the storm system is very powerful. And so you could be dealing with a good snowstorm in southeast Canada by the looks of that. And then after the 14th, it starts to warm up a little bit, but overall you can see some more cold shots coming down here in the uh, east coast. But 
Well, actually some ridging there in late month, but look what happens uh, late month. A lot of uh, pattern change out in the West Coast. So we'll probably be making some videos on that in the future. So how's the snowfall look? Well, this is uh, for the entire run. Um, we've actually got a snow system up here going on right now. So you can actually subtract maybe a few inches up there. But overall, look at this thing. You know, it's pretty widespread across the uh, southern and central and eastern United States, generally between one and six inches with this system. Going to be a little bit more in the northeast. We'll look at that in a second here. Uh, the Canadian model, so this is the GFS, now the Canadian. You can see the difference here. The Canadian's a lot more aggressive. It's actually got several inches, and even down here, several inches. It's more widespread. The thing about the Canadian, I've noticed, is it over-amplifies things. It over-amplifies the cold air and the precipitation quite a bit. So I think this is a little bit overdone. But we'll look at the GFS. We'll stick to the GFS. Now, the European computer model was actually a little bit further north uh, with everything, just slightly further north, especially in the northeast. And it seemed to be a little more powerful too. It had those two f jets phased together a little bit better, uh, but or waves phased together. But uh, look at the GFS, and uh, it's actually giving uh, parts of Texas here a good three to six inches, and parts of New Mexico. And the European computer model was showing a few inches out in this area as well, and uh, and then a couple inches out here again. When you see these blobs here where there's some snow and then some not snow and some snow, I'm thinking that there's going to be a lot of mixing problems down here. It's going to be very isolated. It's going to change a lot. There's going to be some banding that sets up. So it's hard to say exactly where, but I think you're going to have some areas in here that score at least a couple inches, maybe a few inches, and then some areas that don't really get much at all. But uh, overall, probably some wet snow. You know, an inch or two, maybe, and then, again, some areas are going to score big, maybe three to six inches, maybe a little pocket of uh, two to four inches in there. So that's our southern United States, uh, and this is the Canadian, and I think this is a little overdone, like I said, but uh, that's what the Canadian's showing. Now, the GFS here is the GFS. This is going to be for the northeastern United States, and you can see several inches now i want to take off a few because this goes for uh this goes through the uh, 17th here and there's already a little bit of snow happening out there right now on the 11th or whatever so i think you're going to have a few inches less than what this shows but overall it was a good three to six inches for the storm system and maybe a few areas up in here in the six to eight range for the storm system um, the european computer model is more like this it was the cutoff zone was kind of like up here ish with uh, not, nothing much south of that line. So, and the European computer model's done uh, pretty well in the past. This year it's having some problems, but, uh, you know, I think I'm gonna go with uh, more of the GFS's look, but we're factoring in the Euro as well. So it might be just a little bit further north than what this shows. Okay, so in the Canadian model here is pretty much the same. It's a little bit further north out here, but it's very over amplified. I think that this is overdone uh, for the most part. But nonetheless, a lot of these models are in agreement. They've been consistent and stuff like that. So that's a good signal. Now, it is time for a power play, a weather decoded power play. And we're calling this thing the two day trend stacker. So we, what we've done here is we've tallied up two days worth of model runs for the same models, so the GFS for the same time period. And so if you see consistency, that means the model is a little bit more consistent, probably more confident that this is going to happen. And you can see also see where things are trending. Okay, so these are our height anomalies, the 500 millibar height anomalies. And in general, over the past couple of days, it's been pretty consistent. But the latest runs have actually strengthened this a little bit, the southern branch. It's kind of broken up these branches a little bit, which could favor, again, more of that flat look with a, a stronger area up here, down there, and then a stronger area up here with kind of a flat look to it. Uh, but overall, it's it's been uh, pretty consistent, and it's moved slightly west too as well. It's trended a little bit west, so you might actually be getting snow out in uh, New Mexico uh, with uh, this trend. I would actually think that could continue a little bit. Here's our vorticity. Whoops. You can see this area kind of strengthen in the latest runs and move a little bit west just in general. It's going to kind of stair step a little bit, uh, but that's something else that looks kind of interesting. How about that uh, precipitation up for the northeast? 
where is that trending? Well, overall, it's been pretty consistent. Here's your low pressure system, kind of in this area. And you can see it's kind of bouncing around. It's actually trending a little bit farther north and east. And the European model is actually farther north as well. So the snow actually might be a little bit further north than what the GFS showed. And that's what I'm thinking, just slightly further north, maybe a good 50 miles or so. Nonetheless, inland can see some good snow. And then the precipitation here, the snowfall amounts, you know, it's, it's generally the same for most of the run. It's been kind of flashing back and forth, maybe moving a little bit further north, as you can see there. Um, and uh, it might be a little more aggressive with the cold air or something, but overall it's been pretty consistent there with uh, that. So let's look at this, the uh, Texas storm, the same storm, but uh, let's look at it a couple days earlier in Texas. Um, in general, you can see that this is moving a little bit further south with the cold air, just slightly down here. So it's actually trending a lot better for the uh, Texas Panhandle and the New Mexico area. And then we'll look at the uh, vorticity strengthening a little bit and moving a little bit farther south. And then, uh, yeah, so that's that's interesting. And then uh, we'll look at the precipitation. And you can see that a little bit stronger on the latest few frames, a little bit further south with that, uh, stronger and further south with that uh, Arctic air. You can see that 540 line right here, up there. And then uh, at the end, it kind of moves south. So in general, I would... You know, I was skeptical at first when I thought there'd be snow in this area, but the trends are for snow in that area. It keeps trending farther and farther south. So I think you're going to see some snow in New Mexico and the Texas Panhandle. There's some pretty good confidence in there. And then here's your snowfall amounts over the past couple of days. It's blown up just a little bit for the Texas Panhandle. So, you know, things are looking interesting. Um, very, very uh, cold air, very far south for this time of year. I mean, I mean, I don't think that like South Dakota has seen much snow at all. I mean, this has kind of just gone way farther south than than a lot of other people are getting for this time of year. So very, very cold weather, and uh, you know, very interesting. So with that said, w that is going to sum up today's video. And if you like videos like this, we got state of the weather addresses released on Mondays. We got long range forecast breakdowns across the United States and storm systems. We hunt for storm systems and talk about them. On Wednesdays, we have things called Weather Decoded TV. These are weather forecasting tutorials for the weather enthusiasts. And then Fridays, we got surprise videos, storm chasing breakdowns, and stuff like that. So if you like today's video, smash that thumbs up button. Comment below if you like storms better or winter storms, severe storms or winter storms. And uh, be sure to smash that subscribe button. And uh, again, join the Facebook group, the Weather Warriors Facebook group. Enter your contest entry. Uh, by the 11th at 11.59 p.m., again, one winner is going to receive the 11 by 14 inch print signed of this photo right here that I took out in Pender, Nebraska in 2014. So with all that said, hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you soon.